welcome back. You're watching DXB today. Now it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we are diving right into it, highlighting all of the most important information for you to know. Now the journey of fighting cancer takes a toll on your body, but we can't ignore the, the fact that it also puts a strain on your mental health. Our next guest is here to give us a holistic understanding of the psychological side of experiencing cancer. Please welcome Tanya Darmashi. Thank you so much for being Thank with us you. today. Thank now, you. you yourself are a cancer survivor, right? I am, yes. So you've been on every side of, <laughs> of this have. scenario. So yeah. um, tell us now, as someone who, I wanna get advice from you, I want you to give advice <laughs> to the viewers. There's just, let's start from the beginning. Someone mm -hmm. finds out that they have had cancer. What are the first uh, feelings that they're experiencing oh. and how should they go about addressing them? Yeah, so I think the first thing would be recognizing that we're going through shock. It is a trauma. We've been just told we have something happening inside of our body that we had no idea existed inside of our body. We have no control because we can't see it. It's internal. How do we remove it? How do we get rid of it? And a big part of us wants to just get rid of it. And then we have to wait to see doctors or to get scans or to get more information. Um, we, we end up going through a lot, of, a lot of shock, a lot of disbelief, a lot of fear we're not quite sure what this looks like. How do we work through this? And then we have, quite often, if we're by ourselves, then then we can ma navigate it through ourselves. But if we have family members, parents, loved ones, husbands, wives, children, there's there's also another part of us that shows up saying, "How am I going to take care of them if anything happens to me?" Now, one of the things that we talked about was that came up was shame. The shame that's associated with that word cancer. When I was diagnosed, I referred to it as the C word, and I remember breaking down thinking I have the C word, and there is that shame of, or, or maybe it's not necessarily shame, but it's the misunderstanding of what do I have, now what do I do, and what does this mean for me, for my life, for my longevity of my life, for my short term of my life? What is treatment going to look like? There's a lot of fear and a lot of loss of control, powerlessness and helplessness that surfaces which naturally impacts how we show up in our day-to-day -day life, how we show up at work, how we show up with our loved ones, how we show up, even how we start ingesting food, how we start sleeping, how we start, you know, our day-to-day -day life, uh, just functionality. Sonia, I wanted to uh, just, just uh, piggyback on that because you are a cancer survivor yourself, yeah. not breast cancer, you've had throat cancer, and you deal with patients who are going through this trauma, yeah. so I'm sure that you are the best person because you've got the first-hand experience of being mm. on the other side of the table. So my question to you is, I understand there's no rule book, guide or manual on That's how it. to react when you are given such a devastating news, but how did you personally take it and deal with it? So I think what I would like to say is you're absolutely right. There is no rule book. Everyone's going to go through their response in their own way. It's like our own fingerprint. Each one of us has our own tools and our own resources inside. I think um, when I was diagnosed and I received the diagnosis, um, I think what I would advocate for here is that the clinicians that are giving the diagnosis, whether it's our radiologist or our, our, our physician, that there be a recognition that we're not just giving a diagnosis of here's the facts. We need to be recognizing that we're giving the diagnosis to a human being, to another person who is absorbing this information and has now just received devastating news, news where there is so much fear attached to it. Um, and my, my clinician that gave me my news was not very uh, <laughs> very resourced Sorry. in that space, not, not to say anything about other clinicians but was not very resourced in that space. So I received my news via, here's your results, uh, via WhatsApp, and uh, eight o'clock at night, did you get the results? So I read the results before I received the phone call, and then got home, saw my husband, and said, we're going for a walk, because my daughter was in the middle of her mock exams. So it was, it was such a balancing act, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was, if shock could, could define it, it was shock. Um, and then my husband took over, which was a blessing because I couldn't function from my, my logic and reasoning part of my brain. I was purely into survival part of my brain. Um, and bless him, he arranged all the doctor's appointments and everything. But there was that part of me that needed someone to just, even just the, the hold or the touch to say, you know what, we're here. It's okay. We, we're we're going to be here with you. 
and we don't always know what to say when someone is diagnosed well, with it. It's interesting that you say that because I have actually had husbands come to me separately, not with their mm. wives, just saying, you know, what do I do? And uh, because I think men or husbands are used to fixing things, you know, yes. if, if a bulb needs changing or, you know, something needs to be done. And when I tell them, I'm like, give her a cuddle. And they sort of look at me and I'm like, that's all she wants. She's not asking you to fix it. She's not asking you to take it away. Yeah. But just, you know, it's that touch and just that you're there for her. Absolutely. And um, one of the things, I w what I wanted to, if, if this is something from your practice, but for me, I'm the one who usually is giving the results mm -hmm. to the patient. And yes, there is that train wreck initially. Um, and like you said, there is across the spectrum of how people deal with it. You have some very pragmatic people are like, okay, fine, what next? And I have had people who've literally ran out of my office to throw themselves in front of a car, <gasps> literally. Oh my God. But what I find is you have that initial kind of shock in the beginning and the, um, the whole grieving process that you go through, you know, the whole like, uh, the fear, as you said, the, the um, uh, anger and all the, all the emotions of, of grief, grieving. But then what I notice is at the end, so you have that, that horrible thing in the beginning and then you have, um, uh, they go through all their treatment, they have surgery, they have chemo, and then we say, see you in three months. Yeah, Doctor. I know you're wanting to wrap up, but yes. <laughs> I know. there's I, so much know, more that we could ah, talk about I know, because we've just and it's so important. touched on Touch it. it. And I think our viewers are going to be sending a lot of questions and messages to you and hopefully they can come in and meet you in person at the mm -hmm. Lighthouse. Tanya, Absolutely. thank you so much. If you could stay right there. Ash, I'm going to throw it over to you because we do have a little quiz that we need to get yes. to. Gosh, I feel like I need to take a breath. That was a very, very heavy conversation, <laughs> very scary one, something that can happen to so many of us. But to lighten the mood, Doctor, we are going to put you on the spot, uh -oh. okay? And we are going to do a DXB in 60 quiz where we're going to ask you as many questions as possible and you need to answer them within 60 seconds, all right? Okay. Your time is three, two, one, let's go. What was your first job? Oh gosh, I was working in a nut shop, <laughs> selling nuts. Uh, what career path would you go down if you could change it now? Oh, two. A florist and, and the guy that drives the truck picking up the golf balls. Wow. Very unique. <laughs> What's a superpower you wish you had? I wish I could sing. <laughs> What's your hidden talent? Um, I think probably communication. What's your favorite movie or series? Wow, that's a difficult one. I'm not really one for looking at stuff. I like to read. <laughs> What's a topic you'd never get tired of talking about? Um, probably uh, cancer. <laughs> What's a book you're reading at the moment? So I'm, I'm reading about five books at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, um, one of them is on, um, it, it's a, a fantasy that takes place in southern Iran. Uh, what's your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Home. <laughs> Finally, last question, why Dubai? It's home. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dr. Huria <laughs> and Tani. You both have been amazing. Uh, great to have you on the show, and hopefully we'll be having these ladies back on uh, set with us very, very soon. Now we're going to, it's time for a quick break, but stay right there because we do have a fantastic performance by the oh-so-talented Celine D coming right up. Don't you go anywhere.